Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be uh, diving deep into something a little bit uh, heavier this time. You mm -hmm. know, something we all uh, deal with at some point, grief. It's a universal experience, that's for sure. It really is, and it can be, well, really tough to navigate, right? Absolutely. But we were wondering if maybe, just maybe, something as simple as grabbing a notebook and pen could help us, you know, get through it. You know, it might sound surprising, but journaling can actually be a really powerful tool. Like, for real. It can help with healing and processing after a loss. So we're diving into 50 grief journaling prompts. It's a blog post from Lestallion.com. Mm -hmm. What makes this post stand out to you? I mean, it was published pretty recently, right? Yeah, just this past May. And it really resonated with me because it doesn't frame journaling as, you know, a way to just get over grief. It's more about learning to move through it. Okay, so walk me through that a bit. It recognizes that grief is, well, it's a process, you know, not just a thing to check off a to-do list. Right, because it's so easy to put pressure on yourself to move on when really it's about honoring what you're going through the whole journey. Exactly. And one thing I really appreciate is that this post acknowledges that grief isn't limited to just, you know, the death of a loved one. That's a good point. We experience it with all kinds of loss, right? Yeah, yeah for sure. End of a relationship, losing a job, even saying goodbye to a pet. Those are all significant losses. Absolutely. So true. I mean, haven't we all been there in some way? This idea that there's no one-size-fits-all approach to grief really resonates with me. It's about finding what works for you, and that's where these journaling prompts come in. Exactly. It's like they're giving you the tools, but you get to choose your own path. Exactly. Through the wilderness of grief, so to speak. Love that analogy. Yeah. And one of the first stops often involves revisiting memories, which I know might sound counterintuitive at first. Yeah, like why would I want to do that? Right. Oh. Won't it just make me sadder, you might think? Exactly. Why dredge up painful reminders when you're already feeling down, you know? Well, here's the thing. Revisiting memories, especially positive ones, can actually be therapeutic. Okay, now that's interesting. Because remember, grief, it's not just sadness. It's a whole tapestry of emotions. It's about the whole experience. Exactly. It's about honoring everything you've lost. The joy, the laughter, the love, all of it. So we need to make space for all of it, not just the hard parts. Yes, 100%. That reminds me of that first prompt. Uh, write about your favorite memory with the person you lost. And to like describe the day in detail, how did it make you feel, all that. Yes, and that's all about tapping into those positive emotions that often get overshadowed by grief. When we revisit these good times, we're not just dwelling on the absence, we're actively connecting with, with the richness of the relationship itself. Instead of just feeling the pain of the loss, you're reminded of the good times. Exactly. The things that made that person so special. Exactly. It's a way to reframe our relationship with the loss. Yes, there's sadness, but there's also gratitude for what you shared. Yeah, I can see how that shift in perspective could really help, especially early on when it all feels so raw, like choosing to focus on the light even when surrounded by darkness, you know? It's a powerful image. But we also need to remember that grief isn't always, you know, looking back on happy memories. Of course not. Sometimes it's about facing those tuffle emotions head on, which is where some of these other pumps come in. This is where things get really real, right? Grief isn't all, you know, sunshine and roses. It's messy. It's complicated. Yes. Sometimes it just hurts. It absolutely can. And that's okay. It's okay for it to hurt. So how can journaling help with those messy moments? Well, think of it like this. By writing those feelings down, you're giving yourself permission to really feel them. You know, okay, yeah. to acknowledge them without judgment. So it's like instead of pushing those difficult emotions away, you're actually what lean into them. Exactly. And, you know, it's funny because it's often the feelings we try to avoid the most, the anger, the overwhelm. Yeah, those are the tough ones. Those are the ones that can actually offer the most valuable insights. Really? I've always thought of them as like the bad ones. The ones to just get rid of. It's natural to think that. Right? right. But they hold important information. Like, remember that prompt number 12? Write about a moment when you felt totally overwhelmed by grief. Just acknowledging those triggers. Huge. Okay, so if you can pinpoint those triggers, maybe you can find ways to cope with them, right? Yes. And that's where prompt 16 comes in. Describe a time when you felt anger related to your loss. See, we often suppress anger, but the truth is it's a totally normal part of grieving. Bottling it up probably just makes things worse. Exactly. So this prompt gives you permission to, you know, feel it, 
understand where it's coming from. So by naming those emotions, even the negative ones, you yeah. can start to like take away their power. Exactly. You're saying, okay, anger, I see you, but you don't control me. Shining a light on the darkness. I love that. But how do we move from just surviving grief to, I don't know, like finding strength, finding growth? Is that even possible when you're in so much pain? That's a great question. And it's something this blog post really gets right. It's not about erasing the pain. It's about realizing that even while we're hurting, we can still be resilient. Okay. And you think journaling can help us tap into that? I do. Yes. These prompts can help us see it. How so? Give me an example. Well, it's about recognizing those moments, you know, when you realize, wow, I made it through another day. Even when it felt impossible. Exactly. Celebrating those little victories. There's this one prompt. It asks, uh, write about a time you surprised yourself with your own strength. I like that. It's so easy to get caught up in the day to day, you know, and forget about those times when we really had to, like, dig deep. When we're stronger than we thought. What about you? Have you ever experienced that? Oh, absolutely. When my grandmother passed away, I was like completely heartbroken but i still somehow i pulled it together to write and deliver her eulogy wow looking back i have no idea how i did it but in that moment something just like took over and you tapped into that inner strength that we yeah. all have i bet that experience really changed you huh it really did honestly it made me realize i'm a lot stronger than i thought that's what grief can do it can well break us open a little it's true but it can also reveal these strengths we never knew we had. Like that other prompt uh, from Le Stallion's blog, the one that says, reflect on a personal strength you've discovered through your grief. How has it helped you cope? Oh, that's a good one. It's all about finding those silver linings. Right. Finding the ways this experience, even though it's been so hard, has actually helped you grow. Yeah, finding the growth. There's that one line from the post that really stuck with me. It says... Uh, Strength is not the absence of pain, but the ability to move forward despite it, carrying the love and memories with you. That's beautiful. It's not about pretending it doesn't hurt. It's about recognizing, like, hey, I'm still here. You're still standing. <laughs> and moving forward, which is amazing. But that idea of, you know, honoring the love, the memories, that's where these last few prompts come in. It's about keeping the memory alive, you know. It's interesting you say that because grief, it can feel so, I don't know, big and abstract. Definitely. And these prompts, they feel more concrete, something you can actually do. I think so, yeah. Like there's one about finding ways to keep their memory alive little actions you can take, or even rituals. Okay, like what, what kind of things? Anything, really. Cooking no. their favorite meal, visiting a place they loved, even just lighting a candle for them. Just so those little reminders. Exactly. Those little touchstones to keep their spirit close. It doesn't have to be a grand gesture. Even small things can be powerful. Yeah, so powerful. This has been amazing, really. Who knew journaling could lead to such a deep conversation? It's amazing what we can discover when we just give ourselves the space to, you know, explore these emotions totally it's like this blog post said journaling can be a path to healing and growth it's true so as we wrap up i just i feel hopeful mm -hmm. yeah. because yeah grief is a part of life it's going to happen yeah but it doesn't have to be something we just get through right it can be an opportunity for growth for real transformation absolutely and remember your grief journey is unique what works for someone else might not work for you and that's okay the important thing is to listen to yourself be open to what feels right. Exactly. It makes you think, you know, how grief can lead to these positive changes. Yeah. So to everyone listening, what's one small way you can honor your own grief journey? What positive change can you embrace? It doesn't have to be huge. Start small. Even a small step in the right direction can make a world of difference. And on that note, that's our deep dive for today. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.